If you have been enjoying listening to the stories of entrepreneurs across Edinburgh, then why not subscribe? If you're on YouTube, you can hit the red button down below and hit the bell to get notifications. Or if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, then subscribe to the podcast. We hope you enjoy the show. Kirsty, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. We're excited that you're here. So give us just a little bit of context. What is your business? So we have City Access Scaffolding, which is a scaffolding business. We erect and dismantle scaffolding, uh, mostly for commercial uh, companies. And we now have a um, historic Scotland contract and other various contracts. But yes, yeah, so we're a scaffolding company that started with me, Mark and Johnny. And mm-hmm. now we are nine years later with 55 55 plus stuff. Amazing. You do some cool other, you know, like some other big, big kind of famous buildings around Edinburgh. Just, yep. Have you got any? Well, Scotland, yeah. So a couple of years ago, we won, as I said, we were awarded the Historic Scotland uh, contract. Mm-hmm. And that means that we are on all of the historical environmental uh, Scotland contracts for um you know, all the buildings that you mm-hmm. see, like Holyrood Palace, Butte House, um, mm. you know, all all over Scotland. Oh. So that's been, that. you know, that was a real milestone. You must have been chuffed by that one. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we actually went, we bid for the contract p- p- far too soon, when back, I don't know, maybe like, you know, six, seven years ago. And we were second in mm. line for that but I'm glad at that at that point it wasn't the right time. But mm. you know, to to win that contract and you know see our guys working on the most kind of some of the most famous buildings in Scotland yeah. is just it's great for them, but it's also amazing for us and mm. for to help our business grow and to just showcase the the, the skill set that our mm. staff have as well mm. is amazing. Yeah. So how how did you end up here? I mean, scaffolding is a, an interesting industry for yep. especially women to end up in. Yes. So go back to the beginning. What was your story into business? Well, into business, and we've just we spoke about this before. Um, I was part of Entrepreneurial Spark with a previous business, an online children's boutique. Um, that was back in 2012, 2013. So I really learned a lot of the fundamental aspects that I've used and moved forward with City Access there. So, mm-hmm. you know, I thought I, I knew a lot and I didn't and I probably still don't know a lot um, but that was amazing experience for me I had two small children at the time and my girls were you know um, four and one um, at that point but it just was very, very overwhelming to be doing that mm. on my own with two small children, a husband that worked offshore. And I'd been encouraging Johnny a long time, for a long time. You know, I wanted him home back from offshore working on oil rigs. Mm-hmm. And he worked away with his friend, Mark, who is our now business partner. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the, you know, Mark, Johnny had, when he would come home for a while, it used to be two weeks away, two weeks home. And we got used to that lifestyle. It was amazing because the children were little. They weren't at school. So when he came home, he could be a dad. Mm. But as time went on and there was a bit more structure and routine, you know, it was two weeks where he didn't do very much. So Mm. his friend had a scaffolding company and he'd do days here and there if he was ever short-staffed. So there was an opportunity where there was a guy that wanted to sell a little bit of material and he had a van and Johnny just took that opportunity and he was, you know, he, he came home with the van and, you know, a few bits of scaffolding material in the back of the car. And I thought, right, this is it. Mm. So at that point, it was just Johnny and I, and it was only Johnny and I for probably about three or four weeks. <laughs> Johnny um, just, he knew that mm. that he probably, he loved the idea of working with a friend mm. and the trust that he had with Mark you know, that is just, an, you know, I'm quite, not, I'm not jealous, but I'm very envious mm-hmm. of the bond that they have. Mm-hmm. So I encouraged, I kind of set everything up behind the scene with Companies House and access my network. And I would start, I would have jobs lined up for them. They would go off to work and then when they would be back here for two or three weeks at a time, I would have little jobs set up for them to do. Mm-hmm. So that's how it started. Mm-hmm. It literally was the three of us one old O3 van, me at the kitchen table and the guys doing the work. So what, you're at the kitchen table and how are you How are you getting the work then just at that early stage, Kirsty? Well, being part of Entrepreneurial Spark, that allowed me to understand the importance of branding, yeah. marketing, yeah. using your network. So I reached out to everybody that I knew and mm. I have zero shame. And at the time... <laughs> 
you know, I, I look back and I cringe to death at some of the things that I would do, but I just didn't care. And I think there was a bit of this has to work now. Mm. So um, I would just contact anybody that had a roofing company. I just started really small. So yeah. anybody that had a roofing company that maybe had an established business that I knew and I just, I just sold them. I just sold their service and explained who we were and... It just worked and they did a few jobs initially um, that were, they'd done a great job. They'd worked on, you know, offshore, they worked on the fourth, um, the fourth uh, rail bridge, um, the road bridge, I'll probably get that wrong, I'll be corrected later. <laughs> um, so they worked in industrial, so the health and safety aspect was, mm -hmm. you know, top notch. And because they were good at what they were doing, it was easy for me to sell the service because mm. people wanted them back. Mm. So, you know, I just, to, so the answer to your question is I use my network. It's simple mm. as that. And what, literally picking up the phone? Picking up yeah. the phone. I've been coffee shops, yeah. see someone with a roofing branded jumper and go over and introduce myself and, you know, give them a card. I'd follow up with an email. I just had, I had no shame at all. Great. Mm. Wow. So by the time that Johnny was back from being offshore, you said, right, now get back, get, get to work. Yes. This was meant to be his, his recovery time and rest. Oh, no, but... he he was like <laughs> ready to go because at that point, you know, it's for you. So yeah. he would be offshore. Mark, um, Johnny is very much the practical, you know, thinking about the job and how it's going to be mm. built. And Mark is also, but Mark is much more technical, kind of behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. He was estimating so they were working offshore, but at that point they had a different um, work pattern. Uh, so I had one of them home all, at all times. Mm -hmm. So if there was a job, it would either be Mark um, and they would maybe bring somebody else in to, you know, help because obviously you need a squad of um, guys to, you know, build a scaffold. So there would always be someone there. So for a while it was work offshore, then they would be at home mm -hmm. and it just, the focus was not to take any money out of the business, mm -hmm. to live very sort of minimally and just keep buying material, buy material, grow kind of our assets just so that we had enough, enough material to build the next job. And within six months, we, I think, I think this is right, but within six months, we had won the contract for Burham Year High School. Mm, wow. And when Mark and I speak about this, Johnny was offshore. They knew, they knew that we were, you know, really early in our journey. Mm. And I think they took, you know, they, they took advantage a little. We'll, we'll say that. I think <laughs> by the end of the conversation, we probably would have done it for nothing. <laughs> so <laughs> This was the conversion when it kind of... So from offshore, so so they both worked offshore. So Johnny, um, after six months, we won this contract. Oh, yeah. He needed to be home. So yeah. it had to be kind of make or break, which was really scary for Johnny. Mm. So... Um, yeah, so he came home, Mark continued. So obviously when Mark came home, he was working away and working here when he came home. But Mark then was getting an opportunity to be quoting, invoicing, um, and just doing all the paperwork and all the health and safety and all the setup of the business mm -hmm. that, you know, from a health and safety, safety perspective, that was essential, especially in a high risk industry like ours. So that's how it sort of started. But where I came in with the with Buttermere High School mm -hmm. is this was our first, apart from domestic, you know, putting up a scaffold for someone's house when they're getting, you know, roof repairs or whatnot. But this was our first real sort of commercial mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I knew the importance at this stage of we need to market this and we need to get this out there as fast as possible. And that for me was very early on in LinkedIn mm -hmm. is showcasing, mm -hmm. yeah. using kind of videography, yeah. um, what, are we doing that's different? And sometimes maybe it wasn't that different to what other people were doing, but I told the story as if it was. Mm. So that's what accelerated our growth, in my so, opinion. So where do you learn that then, to tell the story? I think that that's just naturally, and I think that this is, and I know that this conversation will come up as I'm a female in a very male-dominated industry, mm -hmm. but this is going back to, this is why you have females in male-dominated industries, because... It's important for there to be not only diversity, but also for a different perspective as, as I see 
what's great about other people. Mm -hmm. And I'm not selling myself, I'm selling someone else. So and I knew the importance of that is, mm -hmm. you know, my family were in business. Um, my grandmother and, and my papa, they had a guest house and she did little techniques, you know, that were in keeping with her era. She would be, go for coffee, she'd leave a business card. And, you know, she was doing that in, mm -hmm. the, in the late eighties. Mm -hmm. So my grandma taught me a lot, but I think it just came naturally. I think I just wanted to help the business grow and probably appear bigger and more professional than maybe what we were at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But what that done is it created structure mm -hmm. and it held us to, it held us accountable because I will never ever say anything on LinkedIn that's, that's not true. Mm -hmm. So I knew that they were adhering to health and safety. I knew that they were being really professional and just trying to be different and just forward thinking. So it just came natural. Mm -hmm. And do you find it easier then to almost sell someone else as opposed to yourself, for example? hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. So uh, obviously being asked to do this, I, I, you know, I, it's good. Those are great opportunities yeah. and it gets, uh, it's an opportunity to tell the, tell, you know, people what the business is all about. But then when I start to think, the, the imposter syndrome comes in yeah. and then I get a bit of the fear and right. it's a bit like kind of like cringy. But then I go, really, who cares? Nobody right. really cares that much about me. Yeah. They just, we're all looking out for ourselves, yeah. aren't we? Just yeah. helping the business grow. And is that, you know, it's interesting you mentioned imposter syndrome. Is that how you get over it? Just by almost switching the brain to saying, who cares? Just get on with it. Or what are your techniques? Um, <clears throat> maybe not for me. But I think when it's the business and I think mm. when we put, I don't have it when I'm, I don't definitely don't have it when I'm telling a story or I'm writing content for someone else at City Access, mm -hmm. never, mm. or about the work. Mm -hmm. And then I think there comes a little bit confidence when I maybe think of something a little bit different mm -hmm. And I put it out there and it gets good feedback. And mm -hmm. then I maybe get the praise, mm -hmm. or, you know, I get the pat on the back that I'm maybe yeah. looking for. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've got, I've had a lot of ideas for a long time that I've wanted to do, but there have been little, you know, hurdles for me. Life is, you know, comes with its own natural hurdles, but yeah. I sometimes stop myself. Yeah. yeah there's that, I think there's that struggle on LinkedIn where it, it feels like you can when you put up about how difficult it is and you know it always does better and it frustrates me because i feel like sometimes you can go on linkedin and it's just full of people like trying to talk about how hard their life is and but that's the stuff that does well and it annoys me because i'm like well i can we can all talk about how difficult our lives are and post about that and it will be about us and and it gets the traction but then you put up something that you actually think is actually quite good or helpful or whatever and it doesn't get the traction it's frustrating like yeah I think authenticity and I think yeah. that for, for me is thinking about what is the what is the reason that I'm going to share something on mm -hmm. you know on and even my own social media um is just that if you're coming from a place of integrity and authenticity mm -hmm. then that's okay if there is an ulterior mm -hmm. motive and if you're trying to get traction mm -hmm. from a personal perspective I think that that's that's yeah. not in alignment with who I am. And, you mm. know, I've spoken about being sober. I'm 19 years sober mm. and I've shared that at times. And I think probably, and this is where I do, I'm being completely genuine when I say this, is I do share things with our staff, you know, on a personal level. And I share things that, you know, maybe where we've done staff meetings about, you know, struggling with mental health and mm. that does come from a personal space mm. and being sober because I'm in an industry where mm -hmm. alcohol abuse and drug abuse mm. and that lifestyle and living in chaos mm. is sometimes a normal, mm -hmm. it's a normal life for people. Mm -hmm. And I want, I want people to find mm. a little bit of, can you know, that feeling of being content within themselves. But with regards to LinkedIn, I think that if you're coming from a place that is, you're being genuine, that you're not trying to profit off, you know, your own, your own or your, your members of staff's kind of mm. difficult moments, yeah. then, you know, post what you feel comfortable about, but mm. not just, you know, it, it, it needs to be in alignment with the yeah. business and with the mm. people have, have mm. some heart with it mm. as well. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Okay. It does. Back off and tangents. It, it does. And, and, and you, you mentioned about, you know, th- that's why you have females in a male-dominated kind of industry as well, to almost to tell the story and draw out a different yeah. angle. Well, that's. Things. I think that's probably the benefit mm. that Mark and Johnny mm. and Proly City Access see in my contribution to yeah. the business is obviously yeah. I do a lot more than post on social media. <laughs> um, but I think it's that being able to see things from a different angle yeah. – Obviously, Mark in, and Johnny are very much in the business, the day to day, and I am all about the business growth. That is hmm. absolutely fundamental to everything that I, you know, it's w- what are we doing next? Where are we going? Yes. And how are we doing that? And what members of staff do we need? And and trying to bring people from in the business and bring them up with us. Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned earlier as well, then, Kirsty, about hurdles. I mean, what are some of the hurdles that, that you've overcome in your career or, or, or you know, even kind of the, the business has, has, has kind of gone through and overcome? Um, obviously, you know, if you speak to anyone that's just been through COVID and went through all of that, obviously COVID was new to everyone. We did not know what to expect and we didn't know if we'd have a business at the end of it. Yeah. So um, we were really fortunate to be one of the businesses and the industries that were out to work pretty soon, two, three months afterwards. And obviously yeah. that was, you know, using flexible furlough and it was just a new time for everyone. But that was really scary, especially when the business was thriving at that mm-hmm. point. So that was a really scary time. But what mm-hmm. I try to, for every difficult challenge that we have as as you know, business owners between Mark, Johnny and I, and now we've got a management team, um, but it's trying to kind of remember that every situation that is thrown at us, and it is a cliche, but how can we, how can we use this and turn it into a positive situation? And what what have we learned? And Mm. I'm always kind of reflecting and evaluating. And and for me, at that point, I knew how tight we were as, as at at that point, we didn't have, um, it it was just really sort of Mark, Johnny and I driving the business forward. Mm -hmm. We didn't have our management team then. But we were great at let, what can we do to make us stand out from everybody else. Mm-hmm. We would we would be on the phone on Zoom with one another. We created um, great uh, sort of videos of how to work as scaffolders, yeah. you know, by socially distancing, which is really challenging. We sent that to our clients. We um, we were quite forward thinking, and that was that's not us thinking, but we were forward thinking. We thought that everyone would be doing this, but mm-hmm. the how that was perceived by clients was, oh, this is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. So that was great. So personal hurdles, and I think that you know, it's. It's always a challenge. Is a if you never know what's going on with someone personally from an employee's p- uh, point of view. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, in the office, obviously, all of our all, most of our um, team are all out on the job. Mm-hmm. So when they're out in the job, it's difficult to know what's going on in their life. But everybody's got a story, especially mm-hmm. now. The last few years have been really tough for people. Mm-hmm. There's the aftermath of COVID. We got through COVID, but there's mm-hmm. the aftermath of do people are people in new employment? Are mm-hmm. they in you know, how did their children get on with their exams? And mm. did someone lose a job? Has it affected their mental health? Mm. So there was the aftermath of that. And I think we're still very mm-hmm. much really in the mix of that. Mm-hmm. But what I would say is that from a business owner, there's not really anyone that can support you. <laughs> and personally, I've had a really challenging couple of years. And, you know, my grandma and papa were my mum and dad. Mm-hmm. They died last year um, within three weeks of one another. So that was really hard hitting. The business, you know, uh, they died and I was back at work kind of yeah. a week or two afterwards. And mm-hmm. I didn't need to be. I was fully supported mm-hmm. where, you know, I made, but it was good for me. It just it threw me back into it. But at that point, prior to their deaths, um, I cared for them for two years. Mm-hmm. So as a woman... I just don't have a job. I've got my children to look after and they are my number one priority. I'm caring for a family, um, well, a family member, but essentially them both, you know, for quite a long time. Mm. And in between that, I'm also helping drive a business forward with business partners and obviously my husband. But it can be really lonely, really, really lonely. And in between that, the shit hits the fan at work at times. So... It's trying to juggle that, but there's also those layers of there's been a problem, now there's a new problem, and then they just pile on top of you. So I think for me to keep myself sane, mm-hmm. 
is quite difficult. <laughs> well, what, what do you do? So I throw myself into things and I'm very obsessive and have quite an addictive personality and I'm quite chaotic and I'm kind of really driven and that's brilliant. But when that stops, I then sink. Mm. So you have to keep me busy, but I'm recognising now the older I get, I can't, I can't keep going at that pace. And sometimes even the, the team, when, you know, the office will say this, I'll come in and it's like, I've had an idea. And they're like, oh, God. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. So there's that kind of as, right, rein myself back. Let's yeah. just get one executed first. Mm -hmm. But from a personal perspective, I'm really into personal development. I've been to seminars in Miami and London. I listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. Um I've lost a love affair with exercise, but I'm trying to get back into mm -hmm. that. But I'm almost scared to get back into it because what I'll want to do is go every day. How did you lose the, the affair then? Um, I was in, so the grief for after oh, my family, yeah. um, mm -hmm. after my, the, it was physical, so I had a lot of pain, um, oh, right. a lot of, sort of pain in my hips. Mm -hmm. And I read, I'm really interested in sort of Louise Hay, Hay's work right. where that kind of, there's a correlation between every ailment that you have is, is an association with maybe something that's happening you, to you personally. So that, unbeknown to me, is the pain in your right. your hips and your knees, especially after it is grief. And I didn't I didn't know that. I had no oh. idea. So um, I think I just I got out the flow, right. and then it just became a bit kind of like, oh, I, I don't want to look there. Yeah. I moved house. We're in, you know we, we didn't have a family home for two years. While obviously we were grieving, so. I don't really know how I've survived the last two years. Wow. I've no idea actually, yeah. but probably the businesses survive because of everyone else. That because yeah. they they're fantastic. They're yeah. incredible. But I just try, I try and help myself. I, I start to notice patterns yeah. now within myself. If I, I get a bit, if I'm starting to get irritable or kind of people are annoying me, I know that it's it's me. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's definitely me. Well, so thinking about then that team that supported you now, like how did you get from, you know, there was the three of you. You land um, Boromir, you know, there's a few guys coming in to help there, but then Boromir was probably like the big kick that's then like, yeah. oh, we've really started to like, we've got to hire a team now and have them permanently on the books and all that. You know, what was that transition like from, um, you know, kitchen table mm -hmm. to, you know, fully fledged real yeah. business? Yeah. Um, probably, definitely Boromir was what sort of catapulted the growth and it was all very much organic growth. It was, you know, we did a good job and then it just sort of led on from there. But definitely getting all the structure behind the business, that was really important to us. We then, I, I remember sort of being just the three of us and then it being quickly 12 after maybe, you know, 18 months or, you know. And then we, I'm trying to think of the, it's funny because the growth, you forget actually some of the amazing things that we've done, mm -hmm. but it's always that first job, isn't it? So that for us, I think the first job, having Burnham in your high school, and also Johnny went to that school. Um, mm. So for him left with no qualifications to then go and do the new school was yeah, a really wow. big moment for him. Mm -hmm. So th that transition and that growth in the early days is kind of where we're, you know, just pushing forward, what's next, what's next, what's next? And we didn't take a lot of money out. We just were really focused on building the business and then I remember just kind of after maybe about four years being at 30 or five years being at 30 people. And then I think at that point, we knew we needed other people. We needed, mm -hmm. you know, we needed me away from doing timesheets and acts. I'm, I'm just, that is, it, it does not make my heart sing, you know, <laughs> doing anything admin related. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm not good at it. Yeah. So we brought an office manager in, and then we brought Ryan in, who it has just actually um, been promoted to technical director. So oh, that was a, it's nice. amazing. And I think having the office team then allowed th us as business owners to kind of had some have some headspace and then to allow the business to grow and actually to also be ticking off all the essential things that you need for a business like ours to be operating with, you know, tier one contractors. Mm -hmm. So, and we take that really seriously. So, you know, we've got people working at height, which can be dangerous and we need to make sure that they're safe at all mm -hmm. times. So, 
you know, that having having that team in the office really, I think we landed lucky with some of the people that we've had as well. You know, they are, we've got some amazing people in our management team now. And that's definitely helped us, having the right people to just help us drive it forward. And they seem to be on board with our values mm. and the culture and who we are as people and essentially who the business is and their alignment with that. So that's really helped accelerate it. And then again, when we were awarded the Historic Scotland contract two years ago, that was a new kind of growth. And then, you know, Glen Eagles Townhouse. And yeah, um, yeah there's been a few kind of, Mm -hmm. milestone moments mm -hmm. but the momentum's there now and the hunger's still there but what we're working on now is just well what I'm working on and trying to get the guys to work on <laughs> is celebrating the wins because what we mm -hmm. tend to do is mm -hmm. we do something or be working towards winning uh, you know some contract and we get it and it's like right five minutes off that was good next mm -hmm. we need to start celebrating it now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's quite a, a very heavy uh, asset based business now because you you know every new job like I, I think i remember i was there once and you're like or johnny would have been like oh that you know that's that's 100 quid and i'm like flip me there's thousands of these. do you know what i mean like it's a very heavy asset business that's so funny that you said that that's johnny yeah. so all johnny does is that he just equates everything to money and mm -hmm. And if any, you'll wander around the yard, oh God, look, that's ruined. Oh, that's ruined. That's, you know, that's 20 pounds. That's this. <laughs> and it's, but, but actually he gives himself a really hard time about kind of seeing the negative or mm. housekeeping and things. But actually that we need someone like that, mm. that kind of like make sure that we, we rein it in. But yeah, obviously at the beginning, we just invested yeah. continuously on new new stock and new material and we've got a lot of material now and that's still growing it will it will continue to grow but obviously if we if we need to hire material we will we will but we like to invest in our own stock and it's just so like i remember as well just being like oh yeah that you know one dude's job is just to paint things Mm. Like you've, you always well, he doesn't like paint time. the whole day, but well, yeah. No, but yeah. do you know what I mean? Like there's, and it, I think you're saying people swap in and out, mm -hmm. but it's like, what what a weird cost to a business to be like, yeah, we just have someone who just like actually just repaints the stuff. You, mm -hmm. you know, how have you found like the growth at scale to go from, you know, such a large asset bank of stuff that you've really got to care for, maintain, you've got at height, you've got all of that. Like, Well, I is, hate seeing it in the yard because then mm. I, so... We've got, we've obviously, we, you know that we've um, we purchased a new yard and we moved in there just probably about a year ago mm -hmm. and we did a lot of investment in that yard that we made, mm -hmm. you know, I, I didn't agree with this. Um, <laughs> this was really important that Johnny and Mark had a really nice, um, I don't even know if this is correct, but <laughs> a, a concrete finish and it had to be all flat. And the way that they were, and this was a fortune, <laughs> and the way that they were selling that to me is, but it will reduce the cost of the trucks because they won't get damaged. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> but for them, that was really important. But um, yeah, those kind of costs, you know, they, they get a bit scary, but actually the yard and that growth of the business, I think when I see the material in the yard, because there's so much, mm -hmm. but when it's in the yard, it's not out working for you. It's not mm -hmm. making money. So mm -hmm. I don't like to see it in the yard. No one does. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I like to like it out, I like a clear yard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the difficulty of, you know, suddenly having all these new roles and positions and equipment management, you know, again, to have gone from kitchen table to where you are in seven, eight-ish years. But that's how know. everyone does it. I think... Yeah, every everyone does it like that. Where there's where there's obviously growth. I think you can if you've got three people that are incredibly driven and want to move forward, and we're not doing it for fine. Of course, we want financial gain, but that's not what governs us, and that's not what pushes us mm -hmm. forward. Is just it's the growth, it's the excitement. Well, for me, for me, I'll speak for myself, but for me, it's the excitement and the kind of like being the underdog a little bit. Mm -hmm. I shared this with you mm -hmm. that in the first year, this is this was one of our competitors. I wasn't sure if I was going to share this, but I'm going to share it. Um, and I'll not make you edit it, don't worry. <laughs> uh, is that one of our competitors said in a gym, you know, I was in the gym car park and they said, the jobs that you want is the shit I throw away. And at that time, I kind of was like, I can't believe you've just said that to me, but I'll let you keep continue speaking. And that was in the first year. And I remember thinking, I will never, I will never make someone feel that way. 
Mm. Now, you know, that if they're coming to me, because at the beginning I would ask anybody and everyone for business mm. advice is how, what you're essentially doing now is how did you grow the business mm. and um, what drove you forward and how many people did you start with and how quickly did you get to a million pounds? They were all the questions mm. that I asked anyone who would speak to me mm. in the beginning. But I did speak to other scaffolding companies and mm -hmm. some people were really open to speak with me mm -hmm. and others were very closed off. But in my eyes, I was like, why on earth would you be closed off? We're just three people, mm -hmm. you know, at a kitchen table. Why would we be, you know, mm -hmm. we, we wouldn't be any threat to your hugely successful business. But he said this in the car park and I remember thinking, hmm, but I'm really grateful for that comment. That's really, really driven me. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, really driven me. And yeah, we turned up on a few of those same jobs and things. And then we, we, we would grow momentum as time went on and we were no longer the, you know, the little mm -hmm. kind of just man in a van anymore. But I just, I think it was more about not making someone else feel like that. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I just, I can't imagine ever saying the jobs that we don't want is the ones that you really really want that's like the shit we throw away mm -hmm. i just remember thinking wow mm -hmm. you know just mm -hmm. have a little bit of humility mm -hmm. yeah yeah and Kirsty, you mentioned earlier about, about being lucky with people you know you've we've been lucky with the people we've got and i, I kind of at that point was thinking do, you know were you lucky or do you make your own luck is the classic well question. They, you'd have to ask them but <laughs> it, it, so i think that the response that we get and the feedback that we get from our staff is that mm. we go above and beyond. So maybe we don't get lucky, but we work hard at making mm. them feel welcome mm. and accepted and we see their potential. And I think that when you have someone that's maybe kind of late 20s, early 30s, that maybe has got huge potential, but they don't see it, I love that. Mm. I love being able to get them to a point and I'm not doing the work on them. I'm just reminding them and maybe highlighting a few things, but get them to see their own potential and then watch them, see them flourish mm. and, you know, achieve more and just feel really proud of themselves, but being able to reflect back on themselves and think yeah. actually I've come really far. Yeah. So there's a bit of luck that they've landed with us, but we've seen potential yeah. and then we're hopefully maintaining them. Yeah. We don't always get it right though. And so you mentioned Ryan, who's now just recently been promoted as technical director, and you're smiling now yeah. as you did when he's you mentioned it. He's 32. Right. He's incredible. So what was that like when you, you know, I'm sure Ryan's another example of many that you've done before, but that idea of, okay, so I want to give you some news, Ryan. Did mm -hmm. it, how did you do it? And what? So he, so just a little bit of insight into Ryan. Yeah. Ryan started off as a labourer at yeah. a different company, right. you know, at, at kind of 18, 19. Yeah. And he then progressed, you know, took himself through his tickets, became a scaffolder. But in between that, went to university for, and did an open uh, university for right. um, structural engineering. So he right. became a design engineer. Sure. So this guy has got multiple hats and mm -hmm. his level of energy is off the scale. Mm. So I really, when him and I get together and we sort of think of ideas, there is, at the end of it, there's maybe a thousand ideas <laughs> and we're just like buzzing and like really energetic. So I kind of, I really sort of connect with him on that level. And with him, he's been with us for two and a half years, but he's, he, he has the company's best interests at heart, but he also has our men on the ground, he has their best interest. So when speaking to us, he's got their back. Mm. He'll maybe explain things in a different perspective so that we see their perspective, how that might be perceived. Mm -hmm. or, you know, sometimes when we think, oh, we've got a good idea, this is what we're going to do, he'll kind of be, right, have you thought about it this way? Mm. So that's been really good. But what he what he also has is that an ability to turn his hand to anything. He likes to constantly be learning. Yeah. And that just, I think that if you can kind of grow with that person, not him grow with us, if we can grow with him, if this mm. is what he's like at 32, oh, we're jumping yeah. on your, we're jumping on your train. So we, he'd be, he, he was our health and safety manager. And we just knew, we made a conscious effort over the last last year as we knew that there needed to be a proper management structure mm -hmm. that, you know, Johnny and I don't need to be in the business every day for the business to operate, mm -hmm. but Mark does. 
So Mark is very much in the day-to-day -day running of it. And we knew that mm -hmm. in order for it to grow again to the next level where we would want to take it next, mm -hmm. is that we definitely need more internal structure. So we brought on a new operations manager and that his name is Chris Smith. And mm -hmm. with that, Johnny and Mark worked for him when they were younger. Mm -hmm. So to have mm -hmm. him and they had the utmost respect for Chris, he's a really organized, structured guy um, and incredibly fair as well. Mm -hmm. So we brought him on board and, you know, we've got our own, we've got our own plans and our journey for City Access, but Ryan just, he just really deserved it. And, mm -hmm. I think we were more excited yeah. to to tell him. We we did a um, a big staff sort of meeting where we were giving everyone a Christmas bonus and just going over bits and pieces. And I was going to, you know, announce it there. And, and Johnny and Mark like, you can't do that because <laughs> he doesn't like the limelight. He, he doesn't, you know, he's really charismatic, and yeah. but he doesn't like the limelight. So we did that. Obviously, we did that personally, which was, of course, the right thing to do. But I think I was going to just get a bit carried away. It was like, I'll be amazing. And then I'll film it for LinkedIn. <laughs> but yeah, he is... So we've not actually we've not actually announced um, Ryan's. Um, I wanted to do I wanted to to do that in a way that was in line with our business, but also with his personality, because mm -hmm. for being a for where he was for being a health and safety manager, Ryan climbs Monroe's, skydives, um, he does scuba diving. You know, he is into high risk sports, but was our health and safety manager. So I was thinking, <laughs> right, let's get him. And he's got a motorbike. So I said, we'll get him on a motorbike and we'll get the film, we'll get them filming and we'll um, create this and we'll say, okay, you know, we'll make it really energetic. Uh, but we've not we've not got him on his motorbike yet. He's like, <laughs> mm, we'll see about that. <laughs> so, Sounds like he's quite a guy though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah. So so talking about brand, you know, you mentioned that at the beginning and, and the importance of that that it kind of has drawn through. And I think, you know, whenever you see the trucks or the vans, they're sign nice, like you've invested a lot of time and money in getting that right. And I think, you know, banners on scaffolds, all those things, like talking, you don't see other scaffold companies with that in the same way. It's really important to you. Why? It's really, so this is, it's it's so important to me. Mm -hmm. So this was important to me when there was just me, Johnny and Mark, is that because it was black and yellow, I was like, you need to wear black. And sometimes Johnny would sort of, you know, push against me and mm -hmm. be like, oh, for God's sake, this, oh, do we need to be doing this? And, mm -hmm. and he would doubt me sometimes, but actually, he can see he can see how well it's received by mm -hmm. clients, the public, and yeah, I think he's he's definitely jumped on board with that. But I just think you as a you know as a member of the team, you just feel better about yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, having a uniform, you're taking pride in yourself. You look better when you are uh, approaching a job and you're turning up on site and hopefully introducing yourself and in line with our company values of being reliable, having quality um, work, being innovative and reliable. Well, I've said reliable, but reliability and effective communication is mm -hmm. really important to us. But it's not just for me, it's not just the way that our vehicles look. The brand is the brand is the identity of City Access. So that is the story of, you know, when I'm sharing on LinkedIn or socials, it's, you know, there's a, there's a loop and it's the loop is um, who we are. We invest in our staff. The client is the hero. It's not really about us. It's about maybe the building that we're working on. It's the, you know, the investing in the team, how, how they do look and we, we've got lots of apprentices. It's that kind of who do we want to be and our mission, well, my mission and the, the company's mission is to create employment that's construction employment that's more than just a wage. Mm. So the brand there comes as obviously the first thing that people see is the vehicles and the banners and whatnot. But that all connected together mm -hmm. illustrates and hopefully highlights who we are and how important that is to us. Um, because we want to showcase ourselves in a good light, but also we need to showcase our client in a good light they have to have hope and you know faith that we're going to deliver for mm -hmm. them we're delivering for someone else mm -hmm. yeah what's well, interesting i guess a brand is not just a logo no it's, of course it's, it's the full experience yeah. and i think that's what you're saying it's kind of everything's connected mm -hmm. ultimately yeah it's a journey it's a journey for the client but also that brand for a member of staff as well yes we want them to yeah. feel you know proud of mm -hmm. where they work yeah 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 it feels like it's in my head, it's just like a premium, like city access to me. I'm like, if I see it, I'm like, oh, they they haven't scrimped on 
scaffold. Like that's like my impression, which is a weird, I don't know why, like it's scaffolding. Do you know well, what we I mean? don't, I don't do know. kind of, you know, I see, it, we don't do taxis. We don't do, yeah. we, we don't really do any entertaining. We, it's, it's, this is just who we are. We're not really sociable people. Yeah, so yeah. it's, um, the guys are really nice and they're friendly, but we just deliver a good job. And hopefully that mm -hmm. comes with repeat business. Mm -hmm. And it's about having integrity, like integrity, integrity to us, but also to, for, for me, seeing Mark and Johnny's integrity as people. And that for me during COVID was mm. really highly kind of demonstrated by Mark and Johnny, where it was at that point that we had no idea how we were going to pay staff. And it was before furlough was announced. Mm. And Mark, we had calculated, so I'm kind of like looking at, holidays accruing and what does this mean and oh my goodness is right okay how long could we survive with what's mm. in the bank if mm. this goes for you know if this goes on for mm. three you know six months little did we know it would go on for as long as it did um but mark at that point i remember having a conversation with mark and me saying we had th three members of staff that we took on before um so I th so furlough wasn't announced and mark has said we're paying them I don't care if we're not paid, we're paying our staff. And I just remember thinking, you're a good soul. This mm -hmm. is, and I always knew mm -hmm. he's a good soul, but they have they have such good hearts. Mm -hmm. And that just, I don't know if that's a scaffolder thing as well, because the hearts that our scaffolders have is just incredible. I spoke mm -hmm. about this all the time, but they're so generous. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, going back to sort of the COVID scenario, we also had three members of staff that had just come on and they didn't qualify for furlough, mm -hmm. but we continued to pay them. And that was, there was no questions asked. That wasn't a d up for discussion. That was, they're being paid. Mm -hmm. And I remember just thinking, you know, I just, I'm in good company. And obviously Johnny's my husband, of course, and I know what his values are, but maybe mm -hmm. we'd, I'd, we'd never been challenged in that way before. Mm -hmm. So I think it really highlighted who the, people really are. Test, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so what, what's the future? Where are you going? Where are we going? Um, well, if I don't have a mental breakdown before <laughs> then, um, the future is, is making sure that the management team is robust, yeah. making sure that the next stage of growth, if that is into new, you know, new, is it real? Um, is it getting into more industrial um, opportunities? So it's, maybe be divisions so but it's making sure that it runs fully without myself johnny and mark and if it runs without us we can then get together almost like at the beginning stages again where it was really exciting and then start to move it forward and grow forward mm -hmm. at that point mm -hmm. and that really that that for me the excitement of having a plan and just this year was monumental for us. I think we had 60% growth this year. Oh. So for us, the last year, if we can maintain that and grow a little, that'll be fantastic. But if we can, you know, make sure that everything is watertight and it's all running without us, mm -hmm. and then we can sort of drive the business forward to this next stage of growth, it would just be amazing. What, what, what sits at the heart of the desire to grow. Like that's been your whole theme. The whole theme of this is grow, 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 grow. And I'm, I like to build things. Like for me, I'm the same. I like, I only have fun when things are, are, are moving, you know, where does, where does that come from? I think there's it's possibly an, I can't sit still. Um, I just think probably from, I'm, I'm 42 and I maybe didn't know this a few years ago, but I, if, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I just feel like I'm I'm dying when I'm not growing. I just feel mm -hmm. so stagnant. There does need to become a point where you feel content and happy with what you've achieved and what you've done and just feel happy. And if it grows, fantastic. So that I'm working on that. I don't know the answer to that. And I think this is a personality um, you know, trait or um, when I, whether I'm not diagnosed with anything, I have no <laughs> idea. Um, I say that in jest, but I'm being truthful. So if... Um, I think there's a part where we all just want to drive forward and just probably see where we, this can take us. Mm. It's, you know, if this is what we've done in nine years, I think well, I'm quite excited to find out what we can mm. do in the next five. Yeah. Mm. So what's your guiding principle then in business? Just lead from the heart, have integrity, do the right thing. Mm. I think, you know, 
you know what the right thing is. And I think when you've got people around you that are in line with your values of being good people, I speak to I speak to people that have their biz- their own businesses, and they'll maybe they'll, they'll maybe say, oh, you know, someone once said to me, you know, poach poach someone from another company and and have them there for you know just a few months. Just to, I'm like, I can never do that. You're playing with someone's life. So I think that lead with integrity, lead from the heart. Do the right thing that's in line with who you are, the values of the business, and have and remember that this is just a place of work for everyone. Mm. This is not their life. Mm. They, you know, your staff don't, you know, hopefully they've bought into the culture and who you are as a business and they want to showcase that. But this is just one aspect of their life. Mm. So there's more, there's more to life than just business as well. And that's where I'm probably at now is actually what's really important is my children and having fun now. I think that we've done a lot of the hard work and we'll we'll continue to work hard and always deliver, but also why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. It's just trying Mm -hmm. to have some fun along the way. And you know, I can't always be really good fun. You've worked with me. (laughs) (laughs) When I get in the zone, I'm like, work. (laughs) So what what does fun look like? What does, God. um, Fun for me, I just think is, Probably living in the moment and and watch my kids have fun. Mm. Um, just having opportunities to, yeah, I think saying yes more. Mm. I kind of shy away mm. from social engagements. Mm. So I've shied away from this a few times. So, um, <laughs> yeah. but when I'm, when I'm there and I'm part of it, I have a great time. So yeah. saying yes more, I think. So fun for me is I like being out on the water at Loch T. Mm. I love being on the water. Um, I like doing things that make me feel alive. Yeah. Mm. Kirsty, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you for asking and, me. And uh, sharing your story. And we wish you every luck in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Well done. <laughs>